just so excited to be here with Michael's invitation today. Um, a public education system is something that I've been studying for the last year and really peeling away the layers of the onion when Common Core hit the scene um, to find out exactly what the challenge was. And one thing I want to make sure everyone goes away with today is understanding Common Core was not developed four years ago by the governor of our 50 states. Common Core is just the end game of a 150 year plan. And I only have 30 minutes, so I am not going to go through the history of this plan, but on the handout that's going around, I um, have the website so you go to it. I'm going to hit on them very quickly. So I'm going to trust on you to do some uh, your own self-education. Uh, and much more interesting than um, uh, watching television, I tell you. Now, legislation across the nation has been drafted in various general assemblies, and mostly Republican general assemblies, to stop Common Core. And you do uh, need to know that we had Senator Lincoln, uh, SB 167 was introduced in our Georgia General Assembly. We had four-hour testimony to this joint uh, committees of education. We could not muster enough votes to be able to pass this out of the Education Committee, much less get to the floor for a vote. So the, ball, the bill was withdrawn to protect it to reintroduce next session. Um, we also, um, on March the 12th, after the bill was withdrawn, the governor allowed a group of very conservative grassroots individuals, a, a spectrum from all over the state, to give testimony to him. After 90 minutes, he refused to use his executive power um, to withdraw from Common Core. Right. So you'll see in my presentation, by the end of this presentation, you will know exactly why he is selling out our children. Um, a lot of folks ask me, you know, about the curriculum of Common Core, and Donna Gardner is an education activist in Texas. She was a 30-year educator. She worked under the Governor Bush administration in his education committees. She is one of the contributors to the um, Texas Academic Standards at a three-year project, and they have developed the very best standards in the nation. She has um, a, a video or audio, and it's on your um, handout there, and I encourage you to listen to it. She explains the two education philosophies that have two different goals. Now, the type one standards could be referred to as the traditional method. Most of us that are age 50 and older, um, when we were in school, learned the traditional method, uh, method of uh, education. And that included learning phonics for really um, good reading and grammar and correct usage of spelling and handwriting, classical literature, uh, math, all the basic standard algorithms of math, and then of course your history and, and uh, uh, physics and chemistry and all that. This is what 50 and older, this is what we learned when we were in school. Most of us assumed that this is still what was being taught. Now, type one's end goal was academic achievement. Now, the type two philosophy of education uh, is project-based, discovery learning, very subjective. They're going to emphasize beliefs, opinions, emotions, multiculturalism, political correctness, environmental extremism, diversity, and social justice agenda. This is what's being taught in our schools today. And in fact, most schools adopted this philosophy in the late 1990s. Common Core is this philosophy on steroids. Now what you're going to see in the textbooks of Common Core is the social justice agenda meshed into the curricula by way of math word problems, right. uh, textbook examples, practice sets, questions, essays, formative and summative assessments which are written and scored at the national level, and including community service at nationally approved sites. President Obama had this as his campaign speech um, in his first election. Serving your nation. So rather than testing knowledge, type two has subjective assessments based on the value system of the educator. The Common Core assessment portion will be implemented in Georgia in the year 2014-15 school year. These are all computer-based assessments. 
that will not just be end of the year assessments, this will be weekly assessments of the indoctrination that they have been subjected to throughout the week. Our local teachers will not have any role in these assessments other than making sure the students implement them. So the type two's end goal is indoctrination and manipulation of the students' minds. I want you to look at this picture very closely. This is a very old drawing of the concept of manipulation. And I just want, we're going to refer to this uh, a little bit later in the program. Now, this education philosophy is not new with Common Core. I mean, everybody needs to learn uh, that this is not new. And, and I, I listened last week to this gentleman. This is John Taylor Gatto. He is listed on your handout. This is better than reality television. I would say it's better than football, except throw, you know, tomatoes be thrown at me, so it's better than football halftime show. Listen to John Taylor Gatto. He's going to give you the history of education but dating back 150 years. And surprising to me, but not shocking, was that John D. Rockefeller and Carnegie, back at the um, start of the Industrial Revolution after the Civil War, they wanted to change our education system, which was all home-based at that time, to compulsory education. John Rockefeller Rockefeller is the individual that forced compulsory education in public schools so that we could control and create a school to work force to work in the Rockefeller and the Carnegie factories. Listen to um, this, you will love hearing that. Who influenced our education? That's John Dewey. He's considered the father of education, but he was a progressive, he was a Marxist, a humanist. He, in the early 1900s, pushed the type two philosophy of education. And he said, if we're going to take over the world and establish a socialist society, we must do it first by taking over the textbooks and universities that teach our teachers. And then there was Edward Thorndike. He is a professor of education. He was a proponent of eugenics. He believed that children equated to animals that simply needed to be programmed. He is the author of more than 500 books on teaching methods which help form the basis of teacher training and philosophy today. I don't know if anyone saw this news story that's out. This is an MSNBC promotion. This is not an anchor that's going off on their own making wild statements. They thought about this promotion. Your kids now belong to the collective and this is what Common Core is all about. Search this on the internet. You can watch this uh, video. It's um, this is what parents need to be made aware of. Our public edu education system is not about educating your children to be um, uh, critical thinkers and entrepreneurs and, and love their country. Now, I want you to understand, in 1921, the League of Nations resolution promoted international intellectual cooperation and leads to the formation of UNESCO. UNESCO was the United Nations uh, organization that was intended to become our world government board of education. The United States is, is controlling the United States schools. 1965 was the year that Johnson passed the, uh, uh, the administration passed the Early and Secondary Education Act. This was the year that our federal government started pilfering our general revenues of our income tax to use it as that carrot on the stick to encourage school systems all over the nation to adopt their philosophy of education. The inner cities were the first ones attacked and um, they were enticed with these federal education dollars to change from the proven reading method of phonics where you learn how to decipher the code to the sight word reading. Now we know why the illiteracy rates in the inner cities and among the minorities skyrocketed. And now we know why the dropout rates increased. The federal government took control of our schools. Isola Foster was a, um, a teacher during that time in inner city Los Angeles. I encourage, her, encourage you to listen to her video that was done in 2010. She will explain to you exactly what she witnessed and exactly what the United Nations agenda is in our schools today. Very entertaining. Then in 1979, the Department of Education was formed. And ever since that department was formed, every Republican presidential candidate has campaigned on shutting it down, including Ronald Reagan. 
So why didn't he shut it down? Well, in 1984, Ronald Reagan did one good thing. He pulled us out of UNESCO, citing its anti-Americanism, uh, bureaucratic money-wasting activities, that sort of thing. He managed to pull us out of UNESCO, which was um, actually, in retrospect, amazing to me. However, in 1985, the Reagan administration entered into the U.S.-Soviet Education Exchange. This is where the um, President Reagan and Gorbachev signed the agreement to merge and share education policy curriculum. Now, why would we want to share education policy and curricula with a communist nation? But the agreement is for global, global curriculum and school choice models and for school to work training adopted from the Soviet Union. In 1985, President Reagan also appointed the task force of the public-private partnerships and um, the Soviet school choice model of privately run, publicly funded schools. This agreement creates a new school system which are called charter schools. Taxpayers fund but lose oversight. There you go. Mm -hmm. This is a lady I've learned a lot from. If you've never heard of Charlotte Isabel, I encourage you to go to her website, The Deliberate Dumbing Down. She was a senior policy advisor in the Office of Education Research and Improvement under Ronald Reagan. Reagan came into office with good intentions of shutting down the Department of Education. And he says to Charlotte, come sit in the seat, keep it warm. I, as executive, have to fill all the seats in these departments. Come keep the seat warm. Read a magazine, do your knitting, whatever you do, until I can shut down this department. Well, she gets in there, she starts going through the file cabinets and uncovers the documentation for the major technology initiative which would control curriculum in Americans' classrooms. She was the original whistleblower. She got fired for doing that. This should be on your handout so that you can look that up. But this is a free PDF book, and you can also listen to her on YouTube. She's got lots of um, audio and video that you can listen to Charlotte Isabel. The um, George H. W. Bush administration uh, created the America 2000 Education Plan, calling for the new American school system with national standards and national tests. And um, Bush encouraged, encouraged all the governors in our states to have their local communities embrace the national education goals. 1992, the Clinton administration changed the America 2000 plan and renamed it to the Goals 2000. And in 1994, the ESEA now requires states to submit a state improvement plan to the U.S. Department of Education, all unconstitutional activities that we're just not paying any attention to. So the Goals 2000 created that blueprint for the No Child Left Behind. Yep. No Child Left Behind is the blueprint for a planned economy and nationalized curriculum standards. Now this is um, under the Clinton administration shortly after he was elected. Mark Tucker wrote a famous letter, it's called the Dear Hillary Letter, I encourage you to read it. But in this letter, they are outlining the cradle to grave education system and the same education for everybody where curriculum and job matching will be handled by counselors assessing the integrated computer-based program. And you can read the entire letter, just search for the Mark Tucker Dear Hillary letter. But you will notice in this letter, children are not people, they are human resources to be developed for the school to work for the corporate industries. Now, designed on the German system, the Tucker Plan is to train children in specific jobs to serve the workforce in the global economy instead of to educate them so they can make their own life choices, the Dewey Thorndike system. Ronald Reagan's statement, you can't control the economy without controlling the people, must have prompted politicians to pass the Federal School to Work Act in 1994. So this allows or encourages or forces schools to uh, become job training centers rather than educating our children. Late in the 1990s, the Type II curriculum standards are adopted across the United States, which primed the social justice pump. The United Nations social justice agenda moved into our public schools in the late 1990s. 
1994, the Tucker Plan was implemented in three laws passed by Congress, Congress, the Goals 2000, the School to Work Act, and the reauthorized ESEA. These laws um, established uh, the bypass of all elected officials on school boards and in state legislatures by making federal funds flow directly to the governor and his appointees, unelected bureaucrats, on workforce development boards. And it also established the use of a data, computer database, a labor market information system into which school personnel would scan all information about every school child in his family, identified by the child's social security number, academic, medical, mental, psychological, behavioral, and integrations by counselors. This computerized data would be available to the school, the government, and future employees. Employers. Now remember, this is 1994, where we were just barely getting into home and computer and business compute. They are so far ahead in the technology that we had no idea. So legislation has been passed in Georgia to support the School to Work Act. In 1997, Suella Deadwater, the citizen lobbyist at the state capitol that most of us know and love, she wrote a column about SR339 and the work, uh, Workforce Task Force. And you will notice in her letter, she points out on this legislation that um, the term restructuring education skillfully hides the fact that all students will choose a vocational technical curriculum. Vocational or career training will no longer be a second choice in education, it will be the only choice. And from kindergarten, Students will be asked to choose a career and will be slotted into training for that job. And you're thinking, well, that's just, that's just nuts. How can that happen? Well, I'm going to show you. Now, here at the past of the 2011-2012 General Assembly, overwhelmingly by a Republican House and Senate, this is the School to Work Act legislation that's going to require career education in kindergarten through 12. Now, when I first saw this piece of legislation, I thought, well, that's, I'm very concerned that our General Assembly would pass this, but it can never be implemented because once parents find out that they have to choose a career path for their child, they'll be up in arms. Well, notice there is nothing in here that says we will ask our parents to choose a career path. This will be the state choosing the career path for our children. Starting in kindergarten, the parents will never know it's happening. And I'm going to show you why they never will know it's happening. And you'll notice, this is the list of career paths. There are 16 on this list um, that the state will determine your child will fall into one of these 16 based on all of the data that they're collecting on your children uh, today. Now remember this um, character, the indoctrination manipulation of students' minds. Well, here's a document that was just revealed on the Glenn Beck Show last week. Jane Robbins with American Principles Project, the leader uh, of uh, Fighting Common Core, revealed this document, and you will see the facial recognition camera, the posture analysis seat. They're going to strap our children into that. The pressure mouse and the wireless scan conductor sensor. And these <laughs> devices will provide constant parallel streams of data and are to be used with the data mining techniques and self-report measures to examine frustration, motivation, flow, confidence, boredom, fatigue. This is what they plan and who's they. Um, and it's all going to be done, on, done online, by the way, part of the online tutoring system. Well, who's they? Well, that is the U.S. Department of Education, the Office of Educational Technology. And this, by the way, is a 100-page document that outlines exactly their plans for controlling and manip manipulating your children's minds. Now, in 2002, for some reason, President W. Bush announces the return to UNESCO. Why would he do that? Well, here you go. Microsoft Bill Gates contracts with UNESCO to fulfill part of the UNESCO's goals for universal education and education for a global economy. They tried in the 60s and 70s to influence the school curriculum. They were unsuccessful, but now they found the sugar daddy in Bill Gates. Bill Gates funds the new Commission on the Skills of the American Workforce. 
he creates a strong American schools and outgrowth of UNESCO's universal education, calling for American education standards, and he funds a report. This report is for the International Benchmarking <coughs> Advisory Group, and it's a report for Common Core Standards. And this is a report done on behalf of the National Governors Association and the Council of the Chief State School Officers and the Chief Inc. These are all trade organizations, and this is who our governors across the nation are claiming develop the Common Core Standards. And this report reveals that the United Nations is a member of this advisory group for Common Core Standards. Gates also funded $2.2 million to the National Governors Association to advocate for common state education system. Follow the money. Now, in 2009, the Council of Chief State School Officers and National Governors Association agreed to partner on the initiative, which means it's already been written and developed, they were paid off, and they will just sign off on it and say, yeah, you can blame it on us. Uh, so $20 million the Gates Foundation uh, uses to fund this initiative. Is there any doubt that the governors and the state school superintendents did not create Common Core standards? Now, other buyouts by Bill Gates that we need to be aware of, $500,000 to Atlanta Public Schools. The second one, $380,000 to the Georgia Chamber of Commerce for advocating education reform. And we were talking about the Chamber of Commerce. If you are a business and you're not a member of your chamber, you must immediately go join that Chamber of Commerce because these chambers have control over what they promote. And it is by vote of the members. And if they have very low membership and they say, yeah, we'll go ahead and agree to promote Common Core, uh, if they don't have enough votes to defeat that decision, then the chamber will be promoting it the same way they promoted the t Splost and the Charter Commission and other initiatives. Now the assessments. The assessments, I want you to understand, these are not testing of academic um, uh, knowledge, but the assessments are computer analysis of, again, the indoctrination uh, of the curriculum. The uh, U.S. Department of Education uh, funded $360 million for these assessments that are still being written. Nobody has seen them yet. Uh, and we are a, part, uh, a member of the Partnership for the Assessment of Readiness for College and Careers. We call it PART for short. And um, this is the organization uh, that is developing the assessments that we'll be seeing in 2014. Now, data collection. So, the federal government, as you saw, funded the development of the assessments. Now that gives them a stakeholder's right to the data provided by those assessments, which would be stored in a state longitudinal data system. So when our governor says only those allowed individuals or organizations will be able to see this data, we're not sharing it with the federal government and private businesses, well, we see in the document that stakeholder is defined as one of those individuals or entities that can look at our children's data. Uh, now, this data was previously protected by HIPAA laws, but the Health and Human Services Secretary, Kathleen Spilius, changed the regulations on HIPAA to allow stakeholders to be able to see um, this information. The federal government will receive access to educational, medical, biometric data, almost in direct fulfillment of Mark Tucker's desired cradle-to-grave database. In 2011, educators, parents, and citizens started seeing these standards for the very first time and how bad they are in so many different ways, and the push to withdraw from the standards begins. In fact, even the Conservative American Legislative Exchange Council, that's ALEC, their Education tax Task Force, which has many conservative members of our Georgia Republican uh, legislators and congressmen are on this Education Task Force, they were convinced after a presentation that we needed to withdraw from Common Core. And so they drafted um, uh, legislation or a resolution to do so, but shelved it after receipt, but shelved it because the Gates Foundation bought off ALIC. Now, ALIC is comprised of about 2,000 of our state's legislators and about 5,000 corporate leaders. So the corporate voice uh, wins the day at ALIC every time. So by now, it's pretty clear who's buying off Georgia's education system. 
And on March 12th, the governor denied that private student data uh, uh, was not being collected and shared with the federal government or private companies. Uh, but our state school superintendent, John Barge, at the same March 12th presentation, did confess that Georgia is a tier two participant in a pilot program with the Shared Learning Collaborative. Okay, and um, so the Shared Learning Collaborative, as you see on this um, uh, website, is designed to support the implementation of Common Core Standards. And you see clearly who owns the Shared Learning Collaborative, that's Bill and Melinda Gates. Now, the data that they're collecting, there is a 62-page document at um, the website, I'm going to show you in just a moment, that has 400 data points. Teachers and parents are told that the only data collected is your students' grades and test scores, so they can be compared nationwide with other school systems. Well, that's just absolutely not true. And um, as you can see, everything from attitude, behavior, and, and uh, country code. I mean, this is, this is worldwide. This is not just in uh, the United States. Well, the Shared Learning Collaborative is now a company called In Bloom. And the purpose of In Bloom is to inform and involve each student and teacher with data and tools designed to personalize learning. And you will see from the Embloom website that Georgia is a participant with Embloom, regardless of what the governor says. It is clearly uh, laid out. And these states are committed to making the shared services available to all of their districts. Uh, Embloom will provide curriculum and content tools to make a personalized education a reality for every student in their classroom. Now, how does a teacher with 30 students in their classroom have a personalized education for each one of those 30 students? Well, this is the classroom they envision. This is from a Chinese classroom. I mean, this is being implemented worldwide. Uh, we're just the last. Uh, stepping stone to their uh, agenda. In Bloom will design that curriculum. Uh, now, why wouldn't the governor pull us out of the standards? Well, could it have anything to do with In Bloom agreeing uh, to come to Atlanta to set up their corporate headquarters? Sure. Yes. Of course. Um, here's an article about parents. This is a Reuters article. Um, parents have uncovered that uh, the In Bloom and the database will have their children identified by name, address, and sometimes social security number. And um, that federal law allows In Bloom to share the files in a portion of their database with private companies selling educational products and services. In Bloom is going to take this data and sell it to other private companies who are going to develop workbooks and online, I mean online curriculum primarily. Uh, the Gates Foundation turned the database over to a newly created nonprofit in Bloom Inc. And you see again, Georgia is one of the states, and we have committed to entering data from our select school districts. Now, here's the legislation passed in our General Assembly that mandates these online courses that in Bloom is going to be selling our school districts. Our taxpayers will be funding this. Our school districts will have no choice because of this legislation. This is Senate Bill 289. And you will see this requires local school systems not encourage or will help you do it if you want to. This is a requirement. And uh, for participation in part-time and full-time virtual instruction programs. And our state's going to establish that list of providers for the school districts. And then you will notice here it starts at the beginning of the 2013 school year. Opportunities to students starting in grade three. Takes all the joy out of learning when you're a child, doesn't it? And the courses and programs must meet the nationally recognized standards for K-12 online learning. This is Common Core. Who is supporting this? 
This is a report by the Georgia School Board Association and the State Superintendents Association and they're supporting the implementation of these performance assessments. Now the, the uh, publication also credits Linda Darling Hammond as the uh, uh, originator of these ideas. She's Obama's right-hand gal. Obama wanted her to be the State Department uh, uh, Secretary. Um, but when Arnie Duncan was filled, filled that seat, he said to Linda Darling Hammond, well, you can just develop the Common Core Standards. That would be a great feather in your cap. <laughs> Unfortunately, it gets worse. <laughs> as if you thought it could. <laughs> Last year, the Muslim Brotherhood joined up with our, state, our Department of Education, the Federal Department of Education. And as you will see, it's to facilitate matchmaking between classrooms in the U.S. and international schools to something called Connect All Schools Projects. Again, this is an online curriculum. And um, this will be implemented in all U.S. schools by 2016. And the Connect All Schools Project, the website is already up and running. There are more than 300 internationalized U.S. schools that are connecting with 137 countries. Just one of the organizations that sponsors Connect All Schools, as you see, they're aligning the curriculum with Common Core Standards. And Common Core Standards is, this is the key, is definitely tied to the Muslim Brotherhood. You can check online to see if your school district's involved. There are many Georgia schools who are participating in this program. I bet you the parents don't even know it. Now, what does all this have to do with C-Scope? A lot of people ask me. C-Scope in Texas is the company that designed the online curriculum that was designed for the individual students in the classrooms. C-Scope Incorporated <coughs> would not allow parents to see what the curriculum was, and teachers had to sign a waiver, uh, a confidentiality agreement, where they could be imprisoned if they shared with parents what was in the curriculum. There was one whistleblower, and word got around, parents got word of this, an IT specialist got in the back door and started seeing the curriculum. It's gone to their legislature, and they're working very hard to remove this. Um, C-Scope came in bypassing the state legislature, and, if, and after my presentation, if you want to learn more, just ask me how that happened. In Bloom will produce the same online curriculum as C-Scope, but nationwide. That's why, really, C-Scope's not all that concerned uh, that the whistle's being blown because it's going to go nationwide. If you want to learn more about the C-Scope, the two education philosophies by Donna Gardner, this is an excellent blog talk radio. City on the Hill covers a lot about Common Core and our school systems. This is a podcast. You can download it to your smartphone, listen to it in your car, when you're gardening, doing your housework. This is, this is where you're, you will learn so much. Here is my action plan. This is my goal for presenting this evidence to you. In Fayette County, I've already started by forming, a, we're calling ourselves citizen, Concerned Citizens for Excellent Education. We are members of the local Tea Party, the local Republican Party, because we've had a takeover. And um, we are starting very grassroots to bring people in, to bring parents in, to educate them about what's going on. And these parents are going to be our grassroots activists to fight this. We've got to get the parents involved. So I encourage all of your groups to start with an education committee and then have them build from there. Um, bring in the homeschool parents because this affects homeschoolers and it will affect private and religious schools as well. Study Common Core. Have your education committee really learn the facts about Common Core. Engage those Chamber of Commerce members Go to your public, uh, your school board meetings and use those parents to, in the public comments portion to start educating uh, the uh, other parents that might be in the room, more than likely not many parents in the room, there never are at Fayette County School Board meeting, uh, but it, the media is usually at those school board meetings. Yes. Now don't expect your school boards to be supportive of Common Core, uh, uh, withdrawing from Common Core because of this report that we talked about, the School Board Association. Now I haven't looked, but I suspect that this same report is, is in every state school board uh, 
uh, and you know, because this just feels like something that wasn't developed by people that have any kind of critical thinking skills. Uh, in this report, <laughs> they promote collectivism. They promote taking our children at birth because, and in their words, many parents are unable or unwilling to do what's necessary to educate their child and prepare them for public school, so the state must take on that responsibility. So do not expect your school board members to be supportive of you as an individual when you go to talk to them. That's why you've got to build a coalition of parents so that when you uh, go after your school board, if any school board member does not support withdrawal from Common Core, they need to be voted out in the next school board election. Go to your town hall meetings where your state reps come if they dare show up after this general assembly. Go to those school board, go to those town hall meetings and use the Delphi technique. Don't go by yourself. Make sure you have a group in that audience that understands Common Core and start asking them the questions to get the answer that you want to get. And you all are smart people. You know how to do that. Write letters to the editor. Call into radio programs. Anytime a radio talk show host is talking about education, do your best to call in and, and talk about Common Core. And then show the Stop Common Core video to community groups. And you'll find this video at the StopCommonCore.com website. This is the Georgia website uh, to Stop Common Core. And the page, the link, Citizens Take Action. This has the tools that you need. It's got letters to the editor. It's got printable handouts. Um, lots of great sources here. The other great website is Truth in American Education. And at this website, you will also find a parent Common Core opt-out form. This may very well be what I'm going to encourage in Fayette County that parents do come August when school opens up again. Uh, this form uh, says, I, the parent, am informing the school, I do not want my child in the classroom that is teaching the Common Core curriculum. My child must be put in a classroom that is not teaching Common Core. Sounds good. There you go. One parent do this by themselves, you must have a hundred parents go to that school on the first day of school with that opt-out form. Notify the news media that you're going to do it. So, my favorite new verb, we've got a T-splash of the Common Core. We're going to play in our community schools and kick out the feds for good now that you understand that the federal government is really the cause of our failing schools. We've got to stop accepting federal education dollars that causes this problem. Thank you.